Okay, let's try blowing things up, or at least knocking them down completely. In this Kaggle competition for my course at Washington University, we're going to see how we can use a convolution neural network or other model of your choice, really, to detect if certain block structures are stable or if they're unstable. Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. For example, look at this block structure. You can see it here. Do you think it's stable or do you think it's unstable? Well, it is stable. If I load it into a simulation that I created and run the physics, it doesn't fall over. Now look at this one. Do you think it's stable or is it unstable? Look carefully. Look near the bottom, right about here. You can see that those, those two green planks, they don't go all the way across. So when I run physics, yeah, it, it topples over. Now, this is a pretty catastrophic failure. There's blocks missing on the bottom part of this. Not all defects in these buildings are going to be quite that severe. Look at this building. Do you see anything wrong with it? Yeah, there's a small imperfection at the, at the top over, over there, but when we run physics, yeah, just the top part of it falls off a bit, and that's not too bad, but it's still unstable. This competition that I'm giving you for the fall 2020 semester, this is fairly real life. It's important to know if structures are stable or if they're unstable. Engineering, for example, is this structure stable? Well, no. So it's, it's important to know this kind of thing. These are simulated images. I created them based on building blocks that I had actually as a child. These were wooden building blocks that I would construct various, various things from. Been a builder since, since my early childhood. And most of my buildings were unstable, but that's another story. So I created these, I modeled them in Blender using bullet physics, and I made simulated images because this way I can generate a whole bunch of these images. Now, just to make this challenging for you and also real world, you've got to deal with other types of images as well. These images can be from different angles, as you see here. They can be at different lighting, as you also see here. And there's a variety of different block structures that you might encounter. Some of them might be really hard, like this one. Ah, oh, wait, I'm kidding. Yeah, you, you won't actually see anything like that. You should be able to see the imperfection to the building somewhere in the frame of the image that you're provided with. Now, there's upwards of 50,000 images in this data set, so there's a lot of data to work with, and you may need to decrease the resolution, you may need to increase the resolution just to actually, just to be able to send it into your machine learning model. Okay, let's hop on and look at the Kaggle competition. So here you see, it does say the competition is not, not yet live. It will be live by the time that I post this video. So the idea is to determine if structures are stable or unstable. Very important problem. You, you want to analyze these types of things in, in the real world all the time. Now this is a bit of a simulated project. I don't have 50,000 water towers to analyze if they're stable or unstable. And the counties that own them probably would get mad if I damage their water towers to, uh, to, to generate my data. So this is a classification problem. You're classifying the probability, so your input into Kaggle is going to be the, the, the score, the output from your, your model, telling whether you think one of these is stable or unstable. This one is actually quite stable. Now, there's a lot of things going on in here. You'll notice there are shadows because there's a light source. This is 3D modeling. It's using a program called Blender. Don't need to use Blender for this. This is just what I use to actually generate these. I'll probably have some other videos outside of the class on how to use Blender to generate 3D data and even to do really cool 3D visualizations. It's a great program. It's kind of Hollywood level CG 
sort of animations and, and other things. So now if I ran the physics on this, that tower is just gonna stand there because there's really nothing wrong with it. All these different block types, and we'll talk about the blocks in a moment, they are consistent. They, everything is, is fully supported. Now, I'll give you a few hints into how this is, is generated. I don't do anything particularly mean. So for example, these blue blocks here, and these are all very ratio sort of of, of each other. So they're, they're very consistent in their sizes. Like here, you can see that there's an orange block. Behind that orange block, you can't see it, but I guarantee you there is another orange block. If I didn't put, is the orange blocks are always halfway, just like the purple ones. So they don't go all the way to the depth. If there was a missing one behind that, it would collapse. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm not obscuring things from your, your field of vision. Now, some of these are at pretty extreme angles and you may not see them as well as you would like, but that's what deep learning is for. This is another one. We saw this one in the video actually collapse. See these green blocks here? Notice this little line there. That is because these, are, these green blocks are not as long as this yellow block. The yellow block is twice as long as the green block. These are all very ratio-like. It's, it's like the height of the orange block or the purple block. That is one. The red is twice as long as those, so that's two. And then this would be four because it's twice as long as, as the red. And the colors are quite consistent. I don't randomize. So there, there's all kinds of clues in here that you might take advantage of. Now this one, just like you saw in the video, when you run physics, these, these green ones collapse and down it comes. And the whole thing lands on the floor or on this tabletop that I have here. Now you have to deal with all these different angles and lighting conditions. Some of these will be pretty dark and it will be difficult to, I mean, I can barely see that lower level, but that's, that's part of the fun of computer computer vision. Some are pretty bright. You can almost see the blocks glistening there on that one. And not every block structure is going to be in this tower configuration. That's just one of them. Most of them are in this tower configuration. There's other configuration that the blocks will be in as well. This is the data and it's loading some of those images. We'll take a look at that in a second. So you get when you download this file, and it's big, it's 14 gig. So you may not want to use all of the data depending on your computer power. GPUs would be very useful for this. Now, if you don't have a GPU, use Google Colab like I showed you in class. I'll be giving you some, some sample code soon to show you how to get started in this. Or better yet, use the notebooks that Kaggle gives you access to. These notebooks in Kaggle have the data already loaded, so you don't even have to download it. And then you can make use of the GPU that Kaggle gives you. And it's a pretty, pretty advanced GPU that they give you. They limit you on the amount of hours. So this is where you can use multiple team members because different members in your team, you each have allocations of how much you can use of this. That might also help you in Google Colab. It's a pay service, but Google Colab Pro might also be useful to you. Let's see, I have to agree to the terms. I own the data, so that's interesting. So here you can see some of the towers. I mean, some of them like this one are really, really dark, but that's, that's part of this. Some of these might also be misclassified. I don't guarantee that there is not noise in the data. You can see most of them are in this tower type structure, but there are other structures that you will encounter. May help to build different models for those. That's entirely up to you. Then there's also data. You'll get a train CSV and a test CSV. These give you the labels. And the test CSV also tells you the ID of the test set that you will be submitting. Okay, so here is what that mass of files looks like if you download them. So you can see there are a ton of files. All these numbered files are the PNG files. These are your data files. 
I very much suggest pre-processing in some way to make them to make them smaller. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see submit, test, and train. These three files are basically your data set that link to each of these images. So one row in each of these files corresponds to one of those images. So let's just go ahead and open up the training set. And here we can see the training data. So the training data, you'll see there's basically an ID that corresponds to the PNG file name and then stable. If it's stable, if it's not stable. And you'll notice that these numbers are not continuous. So it's one, two, three, four is skipped. The reason four is skipped is because that's in the test data. And the test data, which we'll just look at side by side, you can see that the ID is four and 10. You'll see 10 is here, but not over here. And the reason for that is because they were both sampled from the same set of images. So there's no difference between the TANG and the test data set. You'll just see that you're missing the stable column. Because if I gave you the stable column, you just copy it over and there'd be no challenge whatsoever. That's no fun. So that's what that data looks like. I also give you a sample submission, which is named submit. So submit.csv, this is what a sample submission would look like that you would actually send into Kaggle. And you can see that there are these missing values, but I have them filled in. You'll fill in your prediction probability. Now, I just did an average across the train set to generate this. So this is kind of a baseline truth. The data is a little bit imbalanced, but it's mostly 50-50. So I'm just saying 52% probability on each of these that it is a stable building. So there's a little more stable than unstable in this data. Now, when you submit these, these will go onto the leaderboard. There are currently no entries because I have not released this yet and I will not be competing in this. So these are some of my past Kaggle competitions. This one was pretty interesting. They had, the students had to count the number of paper clips. And you can see on the leaderboard, this was just last semester, some of the teams tried really very hard. Look at these entries. And the, the teams with the higher scores would, I mean, did better. So this is a competition. And for students from my class, you'll be, the top teams will be presenting on this and we'll, uh, we'll get to that more when we get to the end of the competition. Now, some of these, these rows were not people from my class. By and large, the majority of the people who compete in these Kaggle competitions for me are in, in my class. And this is new data that I generate every single time. So I don't necessarily know I assume this is relatively hard. I tried to make it relatively hard, but sometimes I don't necessarily guess that correctly. So if we look at another competition of mine, this one turned out to be very, very easy. And you can tell, look at the leaderboard score, zero, 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 zero is a good score. This is log loss. So, um, and by the way, the current competition for this semester is also log loss that you're evaluated in. So if something like this goes on, then I, I need to adjust the data. Usually that doesn't happen, but on occasion it does. Now you're not allowed to manually label the data. So don't, that'd be a lot of buildings to look at and some of them are very dark. So it would be difficult, but you could, you could sit there and label every one with your human eyes and human intellect. Don't do that for the top teams that are that are submitting, especially of my students, uh, you'll need to submit your code. So I'll, I'll see the technique that you that you did.